help. What psychology can do? We can predict, kalau ada 200 budak duduk dekat sini, berapa budak yang akan panik? Berapa budak yang akan naik sebagai leader? Yang akan bagi you know, instructions, that is good. Berapa banyak budak yang akan duduk dekat tepi tu nangis, nak mati? Ada. Siapa yang boleh lari? Berapa budak yang akan look after themselves? We can, with relative accuracy, give you a prediction of how many of you will behave in that way. Now, this is social statistics. This is behavioral statistics on a larger scale. This is uh, sociology. Using all these methods, we can predict your behavior. What it cannot predict, that level of psychology, cannot predict, the statistics part of it, cannot predict who will panic. It cannot predict who will behave in the wrong way. It cannot predict who will rise as a leader. But if you are very good at mental health work, if you're one-on-one -on -one mental health work, then if I speak to you long enough, or if I do an assessment, then I can predict who. So the social psychology is not about, we don't read your mind. We, kita baca corak tingkah laku anda. Macam mana anda laku. Dan daripada corak tingkah laku, we can very accurately predict your behavior. So, COVID-19 happened. COVID-19 happened, you can go and see my, uh, I mean, I have been interviewed on, uh, on what's that, uh, Business TV, BFM, a few times. Okay? And at the beginning of COVID-19, I made a few predictions, which basically came through. One of the predictions is that we are worried about COVID-19 because things like mental health issues, domestic violence, is going to go up. Why would domestic violence go up? Because the violators are now, the victims are now, trapped with the violators. Diperangkap. Tak boleh keluar daripada rumah. Dulu boleh keluar. Yang bila ahli keluarga tu behave like a terrible person, people can leave the house. But now you are trapped. So when you have domestic violence going up, when you have mental health issues goes up, what else goes up? suicide rates, depression rates. Now, this is what we are facing. And this is why, antara semua bidang, psychology is technology proof. Benda-benda lain, banyak yang you boleh ambil alih dengan technology. Technology boleh ambil alih kerja tu. Okay, but psychology is one of them that cannot. Lebih lagi, psychology is the opening Opening degree that is open to everybody. Semua orang boleh ambil psychology as opening degree unless you have a specific specialization already in mind. As an open general degree. Satu degree yang, you know, yang, yang untuk semua orang, dia, semua orang boleh ambil. Lepas tu ada banyak peluang, banyak tempat, banyak tempat yang you boleh pergi, banyak tempat you boleh belajar. Psikologi jadi satu benda yang you boleh buat banyak benda. Saya sudah mengajar psikologi lebih daripada 20 tahun dan ada, saya ada pelajar business people, saya ada pelajar guru, saya ada pelajar counselor, saya ada pelajar jadi apa tu researcher dekat Amerika, saya ada pelajar de, jadi counselor dekat Canada ada. So my my our psychology students are all over the world. I we, we ada juga yang sudah jadi politician. Apa nak buat? Ada orang suka. So, so ada yang jadi politician, ada yang banyak di mana-mana, ada yang actor, ada yang jadi movie movie director, okay? Semua tempat you ada, you tengok psychologist. It it is not a barrier to you going anywhere. But if you are interested further, so as a as an opening first degree, it's a good degree for you know as a generalist. But if you specifically are looking to do subjects like forensic psychology, if you're looking to do subjects like uh, uh, you know, neuropsychology, then of course you have to do psychology first because those are specialized areas in psychology. So above being a very good general degree, it allows you to do different things. Now, 
in the last few weeks. So let's look at some of the different areas of psychology and some things which are interesting to a crowd of 14-year-olds, you know, 15-year-olds. How many of you have heard of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Ada pernah ada siapa yang tak pernah dengar? Lebih-lebih senang saya tanya soalan. Ada siapa yang tak pernah dengar Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Ada? Ah, tak ada. Okay, very good. Now, one thing that was very interesting in that case is the amount of psychology that was used in the courtroom. Did you all notice how much psychology was there in the courtroom? We had clinical psychologists on both sides. You had behavioral analysis coming in, looking at behaviors, telling when people are lying, when people are telling the truth. This is the future of psychology. Psychology is interesting because we study behaviors. So you got people commenting. I mean, there are people who made a lot of money just commenting on, is Johnny Depp and Amber Heard lying? Buat blog, buat psychology, dia, dia, dia behavioral analysis, dia buat behavioral analysis, dia kata lying, not lying. But you see how they speak, very accurate. Also, the psychologists on Amber Heard side, okay, on, yang okay, kadang-kadang boleh juga kata lah, not to say all psychologists are good. Eh? Itu ada satu orang dekat Amber Heard side, saya ingat dia perlu tengok psikologi sendiri. Tapi masih boleh cakap. Ah. You see, can also lah, it doesn't matter. You know, you can be an interesting person and you can need help, but you can also be a counselor and a psychologist. That's sometimes the case. But the counselor, the clinical psychologist on Johnny Depp side. Now, they talked about the MBTI. They talked about the test. We do the testing on a clinical level. The clinical psychologist, our clinical psychology program in UOC is the second psychology program open in the country. Private, private universities. And we, c we do all those testing. And our students, that's what you try to train our students to do, to do th that type of analysis. Analysis of people to the point where this is the behavior and these are the patterns that you can identify manipulation. Tingkah laku yang manipulasi orang, macam mana dia buat? Macam mana you boleh predict apa yang dia akan apa yang akan berlaku lepas lepas daripada courtroom drama? Even some of that was predicted by the lady on the stand. Dia kata dia tak boleh diam. She will go and make another statement. She will, she will have to have a say. She needs to be heard. You lose a court case. You don't go and open your mouth again. You have to let the courts decide everything. Before even the final judgment, she went and opened her mouth again. And everybody's like, why is she doing that? She can get sued again for what she said. Tapi... She almost cannot help herself. So Bob had an issue mental. And the issue mental doesn't mean you're sick. The issue mental just means your mental brain is, you know, is wired in a different way. And because you don't want to control how your brain is wired, because we all can control. We can learn how to control. That's the point of psychology. But if you want to let your mental brain tell you you are the most prettiest person, you're the best person, so you can step on other people, and then psychology will say, no, this is what you are going to do, and the rest of us are going to say, no, that's not correct behavior. You have to stop. And that's what happened in the Amber Heard case. So it's quite interesting when you see how that plays out. And that is the future of psychology. We are going to get more forensic psychologists, we are going to get more, more psychologists involved in court cases because now it's a big thing and suddenly people know it can happen. In Malaysia, um, counselling is very, very, you know, it's very strong in Malaysia. We have Persatuan Council Malaysia, we have Lembaga Counselor, one of the strongest counsellings in the world, if you ask me, in Malaysia, and very good training in that area as well. So all these are areas of growth all around. And you as students, you're interested in it, bring the future into it. The future, you cannot run away from the internet. We cannot run away that the internet, that content creation is part and parcel of everyday life. So if you are studying psychology, you'll be making content as well. If you are studying any subject, you are making content. Even teachers nowadays make content. Because it's now a part of our lives. We all have an online
you know, persona. Some people got persona, tapi itu different story. Okay, we, some people have personas. You have an online persona. And you have an online presence. And some of us have a more online presence than other people. Some people are famous online. Some people, they are not famous, their avatar is famous. Dia guna nama lain. Dia guna nama lain buat apa? Kenapa nak guna lain, nama lain online? Sebab tulis cerita ke, fan fiction ke apa, banyak ada post. Uh, yang fan fiction author tu famous tapi tak guna nama sendiri kan? Uh, ada dekat TikTok, ada dekat uh, Reddit, all of that. And some of us, I don't know how many here, maybe Reddit famous. Some of you all may be more, Reddit, more famous than me. Uh, yes, I also have secret accounts, that's why I know. Okay, not that I'm going to tell you, that's why it's secret. I saw the face there, he's looking at me. I'm like, yes, I have secret fan fiction account. Tapaya, tapaya tahu, tapaya tahu. Okay, which one account all, not need, no need to share, but God. Okay, I also have a formal account, for open account. What's wrong? You know, the only thing that when you are posting nowadays, because the way the world is going, so just a warning because all of you all are young, Tolong be careful about what you post under your own name. Kalau guna nama sendiri, your own account, please be careful because nowadays, when you talk about scholarships, when you talk about the best universities, you know, we sometimes check your uh, social media. So you post a kind of stupid things on social media, it can come back to bite you when you are uh, trying to go for jobs, when you're trying to go, even companies do that nowadays, they will look at social media. They, they, they're not looking at anything private. Eh? They, don't try to, they don't try to crack your code and masuk tempat you yang private. What they're looking at is your public profile. And ada orang yang pandai-pandai dekat public profile mereka, bubo benda macam bullying. Bubo benda macam doing pranks. It's very funny, but you're the only one laughing. That's not, that's not, that's not a, that's not a prank, eh? that's bullying. Eh? Do it too often, it becomes serious bullying. And people can see that. A prank is when everybody can laugh at the end of the day. If you are the only one laughing, or your gang is the only one laughing, then it's not a prank. Sudah masuk bullying, tak boleh. So online, when you do things like that, it comes back to bite you, okay? So for your own sake, when you all are doing, when you all are going out into your future and you're doing, you know, you're, you know, you're posting content and all that, please make sure that you are comfortable with a recruiter from some of the best companies in the world looking at your Facebook and typing your name and then the first thing that pops up is the video that you did. Okay? Of you bullying somebody. Chances are you won't get the job. So be careful about that because sudah berlaku. It has happened. It's not tak pernah berlaku. Pernah berlaku. And it will happen more and more. So just be worried, just be concerned about what profile you put online because that's your name, that's your brand, that's your style. Okay? So now I don't want this to be a one way session. I'd like to have some questions. So there are a few ways you can ask questions. I'm psychology. So I'm going to open. You all can raise your hands and ask questions. Kala very shy. Takut nak tanya soalan, boleh tulis. You have got pens, you all have got, you all have been given notebooks, I heard. If you have any questions for me, just write down the questions and then pass it down. Or you can raise your hands. Any question, anybody got questions? Okay, so I'm going to say something because I know we're online and there are some parents here. So while you all are thinking of questions, I want to answer one question which I had from parents. Because I'm also a licensed and registered counsellor in Malaysia. Yes, I'm the Dean of Psychology, but I see private clients. Why do I see private clients? Because I still teach and I supervise counsellors. So if I don't see clients, then how can I teach? So I like seeing clients, it's also fun, I enjoy it. So that's why I do it. So one of the parents asked me this question. Now my students are going back to school. Pelajar saya, anak saya sekarang balik sekolah. Kenapa you kata dia stress? Saya yang stress, I am the one making the money. I am the one, in, saya dekat rumah tu, we are the ones, you know, that were worrying about money and all that. My, my child was just in the house the whole time, never did anything. This is not an abusive family. All day, whole day what YouTube, whole day on, on watching TV, they didn't do anything. Lepas tu macam mana? Kenapa you kata dia stress? Why are you saying they are so stressed? So this was my answer to the parent. What were you doing when you were 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, or in your whole teen years, 
what were you doing? Were you sitting at home the whole day? Were you allowed to go out? You have had two years of children not even allowed to go to shops. Pergi kedai pun tak boleh. Keluar rumah pun tak boleh. Nak duduk dalam kereta pun kadang-kadang polis, polis kena henti. I'm sitting in the car. How many of you when you were children, when did you have your car stopped by police officers? Did it feel nice? Now our kids are in a lockdown situation. They are told they cannot go out. They are told to be scared of going out. Tiba-tiba kata boleh pergi sekolah, semua orang pergi sekolah. Tapi semua semua pelajar tak payah can supposed to forget memory memory erasure of all the things you told them to be scared of for two years. Lepas tu boleh pergi sekolah, tak apa. Bebas. Easy. Suddenly can answer exam, face exam secara bertulis bila sebelum ni semua online. Online senang kan, can copy kan. Kata pun ada, you, no matter what we say, no matter what we say, we are, oh, got video camera watching you lah, got this lah. You will find a way. I know. Okay? I know. You will find a way. Macam dinosaurs, they will find a way. You also will find a way. We know. So it is less stressful de dekat online. Tiba-tiba must do face to face. Tiba-tiba must stand up and talk in front of people. In front of people they are supposed to talk. Public speaking even before COVID was the one num the number one most you know among the top fears, top 3 fears in the world is public speaking. Orang takut public speaking. Takut cakap dekat depan orang lain. Lepas COVID budak keluar tu macam mana? Tapi kelas saja ya. Tapi dua tahun dia tak buat. Apa parents thinking? It is stressful. You have to recognize that kids are going to get, young people are going to get stressed out because for development of young people, at this age, you are supposed to be learning social cues. You are supposed to be learning social norms. You are supposed to be learning adult behaviors. And for two years, you did not learn those behaviors. Tapi macam mana budak nak tahu? Secara ajaib, ajaib dia tahu macam ajaib, secara kendiri dia tahu. Macam mana boleh? It's not fair. So how can you say, I don't understand why my child is stressed? Your child is stressed because they have lived through an event that is unique in the world. Tak ada, tak pernah. Yes lah, it's no war. Tak ada war. Tak ada, tak ada war, tapi orang sudah mati. There is no threat, there is no bombs going off. But you are told you can make people sick. People can make you sick. You can die. Okay? So, there is no threat? Really? Memang ada. So, we have to understand that stress and anxiety post-COVID is going to create changes in children's behavior when it comes to studies and how they approach studies. And then parents have to be a bit more concerned of how they manage that situation with their children, okay? Because it is a hard situation to manage. So that is one of the questions I got from the parents. Any two jawapans are here. The parents were not very happy with me. The children were very happy. But that's the truth, okay? Apa nak buat kan? Kadang-kadang ibu bapa tanya soalan tak mau dengar tak, tak mau dengar apa jawapan dia. Okay, dia dia nak jawab nak, nak saya jawab, yalah your children are very young, they got nothing to be stressed about. That's not true. So you tell them the truth, kadang-kadang parent not happy. Apa nak buat? Tapi mesti cakap benar lah. Okay, any other questions? Because the, the session is supposed to be about questions. If not, I'll start talking about other things. I can talk, don't worry. One hour I can talk about interesting things. Ada soalan? Tak ada, okay. So let's talk a bit more about different areas of psychology and the interesting thing about psychology that a lot of people want to know about. A lot of people ask, when it comes to mental health, what about, you know, because yang, yang banyak yang orang tahu tentang psychology dari mana? Dari mana? Social media, lepas tu, social media saja ke? TV kan? What, what, what do they show on TV? What do they show on psychology on TV? What do they show about psychology on TV? Huh? Anybody? Siapa? Ni semua diam. Boleh? Adik? Tak tahu, tak, tak tengok TV. Tak pernah tengok. Tak pernah tonton TV. Okay lah, very good boy lah. Never watch TV in his life. 
Oh, siapa siapa? Anybody? What do you all watch on TV? What do you all see on TV? Come on. I want some interaction. I need some, I need some. One way. Yes? Talk about drug addicts. Addiction. Okay, addiction is a very big thing in this country. That is an area that people do talk about, addiction. Why is addiction so bad? Because, bila kita kata, we are addicted to online, computer, kan? You are sitting online, you are addicted to online, people switch off your computer, they ambil computer, you tak boleh buat apa-apa. Most of us, kebanyakan orang tak akan pergi bunuh orang sebab tak boleh guna computer. Because the addiction is in the mind. Bahagian yang addicted, yang sudah terperangkap, dekat sini saja. Tapi, bila you kepanggil drug addict, a drug addiction, your addiction, you're addicted to something you take inside your mouth or you take inside your, your veins. What happens is that your mind and your body is addicted. Okay? Physiology sudah addicted. Bukan saja minda yang addicted, badan juga addicted. So, the danger of drug use, any kind of drug use, is not that just the mind is going to get addicted to it, it's also the body. And when your body and mind is addicted to something, bila minda dengan badan sudah jadi ketagih, orang ni boleh bunuh orang lain untuk dapat drug tu. Dia tak kira, keluarga ke semua boleh lupa untuk drugs. And we know this. So that is why the study of addiction and looking at addiction is so important. Because we know how many families, how many individuals drugs have destroyed. So that is study of addiction, addiction behavior. But we also study you know, different types of addiction. Addiction of computers, now it's a big one. Studying computers and people who are addicted to computers. People who are addicted to selfies. Boleh ambil selfie sampai boleh duduk atas bumbung dengan bunuh diri. Ini you know, bunuh diri by accident. You know, accidentally kill themselves. They didn't want to kill themselves, but you are standing on a bumbung, you are taking a selfie, then you fall off. Boleh panggil ke accident? You know, itu dia, dia, dia meninggal dunia, very sad, but they, they kind of did it themselves, right? So, you know, that's also addiction, ketagihan. Addicted to likes. Satu, you post satu benda, five minutes. Ah, berapa like? Ah? Oh, yo, ini sudah less. Ah. Must take, must check. Okay, how many of you can leave your handphone at home? Boleh letak handphone dekat rumah, dua, tiga hari, tak payah jadi masalah. Satu belakang tu bagus. Dua. Pada saya, lebih lelaki daripada perempuan. Let's see, boys, girls, how many of you can leave, can really leave your handphones at home? Put up your hands. Let's see, boys versus, I want to see. I suspect more boys. Yeah, basically correct. I think I think generally, genuinely more boys could do it than girls. Uh, because girls, you know, one is safety net, and also they like to post and they like to follow their friends. Okay, uh, in a bit sexist, but maybe I, I, think it's, I think it's a bit true. But I can leave my handphone at home. But I know in general it is more, you know, a bit more on the girl's side holding on to the handphone. Tapi that said, I know some boys, I take away the handphone, tak boleh tahan ni minit pun. Mesti ada handphone. So, Maybe a bit different really lah, okay? So that is ketagihan. So that is one area that we study, and there's a huge area of studying ketagihan. What other things do people study? Come on, in psychology. Anybody? Siapa? Dekat sini ada orang yang boleh tahu, bagi bagi tahu saya, apa yang kita study dekat psychology? Apa yang pernah tengok psychology buat? Ada siapa boleh tengok dekat sini? Siapa boleh bagi tahu saya? Tak ada? Depression. Oh, yes. Depression, mental health, apa tu depression? Okay, we study depression, we study panic disorder, we study all these disorders because people nowadays get depressed. Apa maksud depressed? Depressed tu boleh jadi sickness. Sickness yang sangat besar. Tapi kebanyakan orang bila depressed bukan sebab sickness, dia kata dia depressed saja. Dia kata, dia feeling down. I'm feeling down, I'm feeling bad, so I feel depressed. So what do you do? So I lie down in bed, I close the thing, I close everything and I go back to sleep. Ah, okay. You do that one day, boleh. You do that two days, hmm. You do that three days, get out of bed lah. Huh? Tapi yang masalah sekarang, depression ini, masalah sekarang, tiga hari, you you don't have depressive disorder. Kalau you ada de depressive disorder, dia sudah jadi satu yang 
perlu banyak pertolongan. You need psychologist intervention, you, need, you may need medical intervention. But the problem with most of us is we don't have depression. We have depression symptoms. We are feeling bad. So what we do, we act depressed. Now, Minda ni, kebanyak, kebanyak kaliannya, dia macam badan. Dia macam badan. And depression is a lot like diabetes. Potensi untuk diabetes dekat semua orang. Semua orang potential ada diabetes. Bila you ada diabetes, you dapat diabetes, you tahu apa yang you perlu buat untuk dapat diabetes? Consume a lot of sugar. Very good. Consume a lot of sugar. You take a lot of sugar all the time, your chances of getting diabetes goes up exponentially. If you don't, if you want to stop diabetes, you have to do what I don't do a lot of, which is exercise. Okay, I can control my sugar exercise. Ah, uh, but pergi balik main game. Ah, uh, saya pun boleh buat macam tu. Okay, so the consume a lot of sugar and don't exercise, you will get diabetes. It will lead to diabetes where you have to take medicine. So mental health issues, depression and all that, depending on especially especially for younger people. If you're getting depression, you're feeling depressed. Sometimes we have to not behave depressed. Sometimes, even when you are feeling down, we have to get out of bed. And then after a while, you co go out with your friends, you feel better. Okay, life continues. If it becomes more serious, even when I go out with my friends, when I go out with my friends, I'm fine, I come back, I'm still depressed. Okay, then you need to go and see counselors. And before it becomes something that needs to be medicated, we need to manage the situation. Kebanyakan situasi boleh diurusi, boleh diatasi, okay, without it becoming a mental health disorder. Because if it's not managed at the beginning, it can be managed when it's a disorder. Boleh. Bila sudah jadi disorder, boleh lah. Tapi depression juga sebab power sudah putus hubungan, biasa tu. My heart is broken, kadang-kadang orang meninggal, kadang-kadang ada masalah lain. Memang itu pun boleh jadi depression. But again, if it is managed, you don't. it doesn't have to become a disorder. Dia tak perlu jadi disorder yang perlu ubat tu. Macam same with uh, diabetes. Okay, So depression is something that we study as well. Anything else that we study? I'll talk a bit more about it. What's the timing? I'm not sure my timing. I lost, I lost track of time. I thought I had a jump. Okay. Uh, any more questions? If not, let me uh, let me say one thing. We there's also a study. Uh, but what a lot of people like to know about is abnormal psychology. Yeah, yes, that was enough. What about abnormalities? Abnormal psychology. Now we do study abnormal psychology. So we study things like psychopathy. They study psychopaths. They study the dark triad of behavior. You know. All these things psychologists study, and it's quite it, it is the interesting or the dark part of psychology. How do you predict behaviors of killers? How do you predict behaviors of shooters? Because if you can't predict it, you can't stop it. So that is also a part of what we do as therapists, as mental health workers. Okay, but the most thing I do as counselors, as a counselor, is to help people overcome some of the issues I talked about. So the stress of coming out of COVID, we've I have clients, we talk, we talk to clients about that. Ibu bapa nak cerai. We talk to children, we talk to parents about that. We help people through those things. People have urges on the dark side. They want to overcome those urges. We help people overcome those urges so they don't have to go to jail. Itu jadi sebanyakkan kerja sebagai counselor dengan clinical psychologist. Those are the work of the counselors and the clinical psychologists. Kalau kata neuropsychology, which is a very big way into the future, post-COVID, this is, you know, into the future, it doesn't matter about COVID, it's more about technology. It's the first time we can really look at the brain without harming people. Now we have the ability to see the brain to look to look at what's going on in your brain, which part of the brain needs medication, which part of the brain doesn't, so you can target bahagian-bahagian dalam minda yang you know sudah ada masalah, or we can predict which part of the brain has got issues and help them manage those issues. Okay, so 
ini semua benda kita boleh buat sekarang dengan neuropsychology. Tengok apa dalam brain, brain kita, macam mana, how does the brain actually affect behaviors and moods and emotions? Because emotion is also in the brain. Emotion tu bukan dalam sini. Everything is here. Your brain, your, your thoughts, your feelings, it's all here. Your behavior is outside. But doctor, when I get heartbreak, my heart, my heart feels painful. So why does my heart feel pain painful if you're saying it's my brain that's supposed to be painful? Why? Even if you hit your hand, if your brain cannot feel pain, you won't feel pain. You can only feel pain if your brain is involved. Why does your heart feel painful or the chest area feels painful? Is because when you are in emotional pain, the chest compresses. The chest is the one that that twists, that the, the muscles in the chest compresses. Your, the muscle, muscle, the, you know, your, your, the muscles here are affected more than the muscles here because the muscle in the brain is not affected. But it sends, you know, messages to the heart area and the heart area twists and that's why it's affected. You stop the brain, you stop the heart. That's why when you, when you, when you sleep, you, you don't have that pain. Bila tidur, tak rasa sakit kan? Sebab brain is sleeping, brain is sleeping, body also can sleep. It's only when you wake up. Kan? And you think about it. Kadang-kadang you buat kerja kan, ada even physical pain. You know, you ada patah tangan ke, patah kaki ke. Okay. Uh, ada apa pat, ada ada apa-apa physical pain. When you are doing something you're interested in, you forget the physical pain. Pain tu dah hilang dah. You buat something you suka, you dengan kawan-kawan, you main atau tengok orang main bola. Bila dia main bola, bila main bola tak rasa sakit. Lepas main, oi, sakit betul. Tak boleh buat apa-apa. Tak boleh tolong mak. Boleh, boleh, boleh kick the ball but cannot help your mother. Correct or not? How come? Macam mana? Is it you're being naughty? No, you're not being naughty. It is basically when you are playing football, your brain is not focused on the pain. But the minute you're not doing anything, you're not doing anything that you're focused on, your focus is now on the pain areas. Sedap kan? So then it hurts lah. That's how, that's how it works. That's how it works. That's how the brain actually works. So, this is basically what my, and I need, I mean, still still no questions, no questions online as well. Okay. Tak ada soalan dekat dalam bilik? No questions? Yes. Ada soalan? Nice, nasib baik ada soalan. Susah, tak ada soalan ni. Saya orang saya, seorang saja cakap. Ask. How do you handle with post uh, depression as a student without a therapist? How do you handle depression without a therapist? Is that the question? All right. So if you are a student and you are feeling depressed, okay, and you have got serious feelings of depression, how do you handle it? Number one, remember what I said that your brain, when you're focused, forgets about other things. So find your areas of interest that is outside of studies as well. You need to balance between what you like and what you have to do. Kadangkala, we have no choice, we have to study. So sometimes, you know, has there any, has there, is there anybody who doesn't do SPM because they're depressed? Put up your hand. Ada, you, ada you tahu orang ke yang tak buat SPM sebab banyak depressed? M mungkin ada lah, few people. But most of us, are we depressed while we're doing SPM? While we're doing SPM, while we're doing exams, are we depressed or not? The answer is yes, we are. Kebanyakan orang, kita perlu pergi kerja, whether you're depressed or not. So, the first thing as a student you have to understand is, we have to do what we have to do. If not, we ruin a lot of things for, our, for ourselves. So, first thing is, you have to choose. You, kita, kita, buat, kita kena buat pilihan. Ini, saya perlu buat. No matter what, depressed ke, not depressed ke, if I don't do this, it will be worse. So, I do this because I have to do it. Okay, good. So, that's one side. The other one is, what do I want to do? What gives me a bit of pleasure? What gives me a bit of enjoyment? So for some people, okay, I balance between listening to music and doing my, doing my, uh, and being, and studying. Uh, saya, saya tahu ada ahli keluarga saya, dia binya, bila dia depressed, dia tulis poesi. Dia tulis poesi macam dark dark betul kena dark dark ni betul bunuh orang pun boleh dia dia dibunuh pun boleh apa apa dia tulis dengan poesi dia 
nasib baik bila waktu waktu kita uh, my my family were growing up tak ada internet. Kalau dia post dekat internet waktu tu mati kita. Okey, semua orang kata mesti pergi tengok psychiatrist. But there's nothing wrong. Sometimes we need that outlet. So if your outlet is I have to, you know, do some poetry, some dark poetry. Some people is art. Some people is football. Some people is, you know, it's games, physical activity. So when you are depressed as a as a young person, and if you feel that I cannot go for counselling, I cannot do this, then you must make some choices. Choice number one is the studies. I I know I have to do the studies because if not, it's going to get worse. Number one. Choice number two. What is a place where I can express my negative self without judgment? I boleh express kendiri saya tanpa orang, you know, kata apa masalah you? Kenapa you cakap macam tu? So find a way. Whether it's art. Whether it's poetry, whether it's drawing, whether it's writing, whether it's games, whether it's fighting, find a way. Give some time to it a day. Satu hari tu 24 jam boleh. You plan your hours lah. So you give your time to that. And then, I know this is a bit hypocritical seeing my size, but it's the truth. Exercise. Perlu buat. Okay. I pun boleh buat exercise. Okay. I do do exercise. Not enough to lose weight, but enough to keep myself healthy. I don't take any kind of meds, and I'm a lot. I'm a lot older than you all. Okay, but exercise. You cannot run away. Exercise is pergi luar daripada rumah, sunshine. It does help manage mental health disorders. Okay, especially if it's at the level of it's not. Sorry, it does help manage mental health before it becomes a disorder. Once it's a disorder, then you need more intervention. But in the beginning stages, definitely it will help. It will help balance the life a bit. So those are things you can do. Benda lain yang boleh buat is pray and meditate. It does help. Kenapa prayer and meditation? What is, uh, psychologists kata praying and meditation? Sebab bila kita sembahyang, bila kita meditate, we control this. You have, you are talking to yourself. You are focusing here. You block the world. You focus on your mind, and you tell your mind what to do. You tell your mind what to say. You tell your mind how to pray. So if you if you practice doing that. If you practice controlling the mind, then you're less likely for the mind to go out of control. So that is the answer. That is the short answer. Oh, the long. It's not very short. That was a quite the long answer to that. Okay. Thank you very much for the question. I know it's not your question. Kawan you yang lebih berani bagi you, tapi you berani jawab, berani jawab, berani tanya tu. So big hand to you. Thank you very much for the question. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, we always we, yes. Under abnormal psychology, we have OCD. OCD is obsessive compulsive behavior. AC, uh, ADHD is attention deficit uh, disorder. ADD attention def uh, deficit is another word disorder, but it's both disorders. We study this, uh, these disorders as part of abnormal psychology, as part of developmental psychology because some of it are developmental issues, and many different types of psychology. So this, we, we don't just study it, we study how to manage it. Now, you have to understand that the spectrum, autism spectrum, pernah dengar kan autism spectrum, ada orang yang autistic, it is not, a med, it cannot be medicated. There is no cure for autism, unfortunately, because they're not sick. It's the body is born in that way, the mind is born in that way. It is situations that must be managed. And an autistic child is as you know, is, is capable of a lot of things. But they need different types of interventions at times to get them to that level. All right? So their children are different. But yang, yang, yang kesian kadang-kadang kita kata, when people think that, oh, because you're autism, you've got, no, you got no life, you've got no future. It's just not true. Children with autism, pe young people, old people with autism, they're old people nowadays who are autistic, who have got jobs, who are independent, who are married, who have their own children. The world right now has got a lot of opportunities for people because there's a lot of different support that can be provided. So please don't, you know, just... Ada yang autistic, tak boleh kata, tak boleh buat apa-apa. Boleh. Ada benda yang boleh dibuat. Okay, to support people. All right? Thank you, thank you for the question. But that is what we study. So I just wanted to add what autism is a bit. Anything else? Hi. Yes? Okay, 
uh, schizophrenia as part of the DSM with the diagnostic, the diagnostic statistics manual has got all these different types of disorders and schizophrenia is definitely one of the disorders there. Schizophrenia is a very scary disorder, dis di sorry, disorder because it happens with high performing people. That means there's no, there can be no, there can be no signs of schizophrenia right up till they hit their 20s and suddenly they get schizophrenic. And suddenly, you know, all that potential is damaged by the schizophrenia. Now, I can speak of that because I had a brother who was diagnosed with schizo schizophrenia. So he was fine until he was in his 20s and then something happened and something went wrong. So these are sicknesses that, does, that do happen and these are areas that we do study and we, we do have to face. And they're not easy. They're, there's, they're in no way are these easy areas and there's no easy answer into managing schizophrenia. But again, they, they can be managed to a point. All right, good question. All right, anything else? Oh, I think, yeah, there are a few more here. I have to. Maxwell brainwash Dalam psychology. Good question. Okay, what is the Maxwell brainwash Dalam psychology? Dalam psychology, bila kita kata psychology, this, this, is, not, this is not James Bond, eh? we're talking about real psychology. What do we consider brainwashing? We actually consider brainwashing grooming. Grooming is, we call it grooming. Grooming is when somebody wants to abuse or take power or control somebody else. An adult who wants to control a child, to uh, 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 somebody who wants to get and control their partner, whether it's the guy or the girl, they want to control their partner, so it's adults, between two adults. One partner wants to control the other. What happens is grooming, and in grooming, they control not your mind, but your self-esteem. Apa yang dia buat, dia patahkan self-esteem anda sampai un, so, until you believe that this person knows what is best for you, is the only person who's doing what's good for you, nobody else is doing what's good for you, only this person is good for you. Because that's what they have taught you. And then they get you to do all kinds of things. For young people online, you have got people who, who can brainwash you online to have a lot of different types of behavior than you normally do because they will threaten. The biggest threat is, if you don't do what I want you to do, I will leave. If you don't do what I want you to do, you cannot talk to me anymore. It's actually the biggest threat among brainwashers because they have made you believe that they need you so much, that you need them so much, so you'll do anything for them. Now, this is very dangerous when we talk about online pedophilia when we talk about stalkers online and the dangers online, because adults, they make the child think you're very special. The, they make the people think you're very special. You're the only one who understands me. They're 30 year old, they're talking to a 16 year old. The 16 year old can understand a 30 year old. No. The 16 year old is being manipulated. So that is what brainwashing is. It's not like in um, James Bond movies and all that. So the brainwashing doesn't make you forget who you are. What it makes you do is, it makes you value apa yang dia buat, dia buatkan anda hendak attention, you need the attention, you need the, you need the, the compliments, you need the, the approval of this person more than anybody else in the world. So, lain semua relationship tak payah, yang ini saja yang jadi penting. That's the, that, that is brainwashing. Okay? Then, another question here is, what should I do when I am feeling down and it's starting to hurt my chest? And then it's starting hard to believe. After that, I really have a hard time to sleep. Okay, so what you should do when it first starts? So now you notice, uh, sini ada pattern. You, 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 saya baca lagi, uh, you think, uh, dari sini ada satu pattern. Apa yang saya perlu buat, buat bila, uh, bila saya, saya, rasa, uh, saya rasa murang, um, and I'm starting to hurt my chest. So, mula-mula daripada chest. Lepas itu, it's starting to hurt. It's, lepas daripada chest, it's hard to breathe. I tak boleh bernafas. Lepas itu, saya tak boleh tidur. So, perasaan itu ada ketambahan incremental increases in the emotional behavior. So, what you need to do is, you need to stop it at the first point. So, the minute you start feeling hard to, you start feeling pain. My chest saya sudah, saya, saya nak sakit ni. Saya nak sakit. So, what do we do? Bila kita nak sakit, apa yang kita buat? Minda kita tentang sakit. Ah, yeah, if that person uh, never bully me, I won't feel so sad. If that per uh, especially a uh, breakup. Okay, well, let's take this as a case of breakup. I sudah break up dengan boy tu, break up, atau break up dengan girl tu, 
uh, then now it's one, uh, two, two weeks later, I think of this person, my chest hurts. So as soon as you're thinking, what do you start thinking? When your chest is hurting, what do you think? You think of that person. You think of what if I had said something else? What if that person had done something else? What if that person did something else? So you're thinking more and more of that person. So then the feeling becomes more and more. So what you need to do, and it's very hard. It's not easy. Okay? Sometimes the best things are, are the hardest things for us to do. To get over this type of things, the hardest things. So as soon as the pain starts, you need to find a way to distract yourself from the pain. Okay? I'm starting to hurt. I know I'm going to start thinking of this person again. You know what? I need to think of something else. So you need to go and, you know, need to call a friend. You need to go and complain to a friend. Your friend also fed up with you. Okay, la, I need to write. I need to read. I need to jump around. I need to go. I need to do something else. So you need to do something to stop thinking about it. Now, one of the things you don't do, because this is very common, ini cara orang menjadi ketagih. Bila you have the pain, you start doing something stupid like drinking. You start doing something stupid like, you know, taking drugs. Because you don't want to think of the pain, so you take the drugs. Uh, then you have a ketagihan, because you're trying to stop that pain, you do something stupider. Don't do something stupider to stop something that's already ridiculous. Choose a habit that is healthier. At least can tahan lah for a little while. So writing, reading, doing something creative, doing something, you know, a bit fun, a bit crazy. You know, if people can roller skate, you can do physical things. Go and do. You can skateboard. You can, you know, you, all kinds of things nowadays. If you're, if you know, if you can go and play, you know, if you're a gamer, go and play a game. I mean, that's why sometimes gamers are a bit okay. Get too addicted to games, but that's also not a good thing. Okay, although I'm a gamer, so there you go. Yeah, so that's one of those things. Oh, go to more questions now. Oh, lima minit lagi, tapi dua kasih. So very quickly, yeah. How can we control emotion when it comes at the wrong time? How accurate is MBTI? Like, is it relevant to the bidang? Oh yes, uh, MBTI. Okay, MBTI is one of the psychological tools. MB now we for, for which one is it? Uh, it is relevant. There is a certain rules and regulations for applying any of these tools. Okay, MBTI is the one that. Which one is MBTI now? Which uh, Marva, my brain is uh, short circuiting. Which one is MBTI? Off the, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Uh, MBTI is the career one, right? The personality. Or is that a different one? I'm getting confused in my brain. Okay, the one from the one that was used by, Am by, by Amber Heard's uh, lawyer. Okay, I can't remember what that. I can't remember the short form of it. I'm very bad with short form names, I'm sorry. Okay, the one that was used by, by Amber Heard's lawyer, by Amber, sorry, by Johnny Depp's lawyer, is very accurate. The Minnesota personality test, that is very accurate. MBTI is also used, it's also used with a certain level of accuracy. I just, at the moment, cannot accurately remember which test it is. There are so many. Okay? So it is one of the accurate ones and it's the one used for quite some time. How do you control your emotions when it comes in the wrong time? When your emotions come in the wrong time, how do you normally do it? Normally what? You cry, you explode, okay? What do you do? Oh, uh, first, I mean, because I don't know you, so it's very hard for me to say, what can you do? I can only say, what can I do in this case? I, I had a te when, I, when I was in my 20s, I had, a, I had a reputation for having a very bad temper. My mother died when I was 22. Mak saya meninggal bila saya 22 tahun. Waktu tu, 2-3 tahun, my anger was very, very hot. Apa-apa pun saya boleh marah. Sebab bila mak saya meninggal, saya tak boleh tahan tu. Banyak, banyak benda yang berlaku, but not just the mother's death. So many things happened because my mother died. So my, I, I had a reputation at the time for being very angry. So how then, at, so then after a few years, I cannot tahan already. I needed to control myself. So one of the things that I did was that if I'm feeling very angry, saya main dengan kaki. I, ang I imagine my anger is like a ball. Seperti satu bola dalam bawah bawah kaki saya, saya tekan. Saya tak boleh tekan orang lain. Kadang-kadang I'm smiling but my leg is killing something. I'm killing the ball under my leg. I'm killing that thing under my leg. Because I don't want people to see I'm angry. For me then I don't want to show people emotion because certain people will use that emotion against you. So when you don't want people to use your own emotions against you, you must start controlling your emotions. And sometimes it's easy when you have something in your mind, it's physically, so I take out my anger, 
I imagine my anger like a red color ball. I put it under my foot. I step. If I am sad, if and the sad is the hardest. When I'm sad in front of people, or people insult you and you're like very sad, but you don't want to cry, then you must put a mask. No choice. So to a certain extent, it's like, I'm not, I don't want to cry in front of you. You are not my friend. You know what? I don't want you to be so happy I am crying. I don't want you to see how much you hurt me. So I pretend it doesn't hurt. Kadangkala mesti drama. That's all we can do. Okay? So I cannot give you the best answer because I don't know you. I can only share what my answer is. So one is acting. You get very good at acting and pretending it doesn't hurt because I don't want them to see. But after that, I did go for therapy. I did see somebody about my uh, my anger, why I, why I couldn't get angry. Actually, I was guilty. Walaupun mak saya meninggal, I had nothing to do with me. Tapi, we must ingat, we must have some magic that we could have done to stop my mother from dying. Nothing I could have done. But it took me a while to accept that. That there was nothing you can do. So, Sometimes things happen, tragedy happens, and we have to manage. And it's not easy. Even at my age, it's not easy. At your age, it's also hard. And a lot of respect to all of you who are trying, who are going through a lot of things in your life, and who are studying, and who are doing well. And sometimes, you know, you have to just survive. And for you all who survive, good luck. Thank you very much for listening to me. Terima kasih.